Greetings. Today we're going to look at one of the inflation scares that existed in 2020 and 2021, which is also illustrative of how the Federal Reserve is distorting the entire economy through their stop start and highly concentrated and very misguided understanding of monetary creation and technological deflation, which is effectively destroying decision making ability across the entire economy and is widening the gap between the large institutions and individuals because the large institutions can front run the Federal Reserve and have to front run the Federal Reserve, whether in a time of QE or in a time of deprinting, quantitative tightening, because there is no other surefire way to make money. That is the damage all of these economists have done because they are so theoretical that to them it's just a video game. This chart is from the Calculated Risk blog over here and it'll be in the description box below. And this is the price of framing lumber prices. If you're not from the United States, lumber means the wood that is in the form of planks and boards that is used for housing construction. Now, as you can see here, the price has been relatively stagnant for over 15 years, including during the housing boom of 2005, 6, 7, as well as the housing bust of 2008, 2009. Then it started to rise because the Federal Reserve started quantitative easing again. And during the COVID-19 crisis, the Federal Reserve did a massive amount of quantitative easing, which they should have been doing anyway. But the problem is they only buy two things, treasuries and mortgage-backed securities, because they're facilitating only two types of expansion. U.S. federal government spending, whether the spending is on anything good or not. Most would argue that the U.S. federal government's spending is on things that worsen the human condition at this point. And mortgage-backed securities, that's the second thing the Federal Reserve buys, and that is designed just to prop up the housing market. And this is exclusively for the benefit of wealthy homeowners and upper middle class homeowners to a lesser extent. But if you don't own a home, you are being left behind. Yet somehow the Federal Reserve does not have a moral problem with boosting only one market, the housing market, and leaving aside anyone else else who is not directly in a position to benefit from it. This is because politically, the one overarching objective of voters, including in the United States, is that their home prices should rise. Nothing else really matters. They will support anything that helps their home prices rise or anything that they can be led to believe will help their home prices rise. And that's why the Federal Reserve, by buying mortgage-backed securities, is conducting a moral hazard and leaving behind people who do not have homes. But in doing so to such an extreme degree, things become very distortive. Look at this chart of framing lumber prices. And you may have heard in 2020, 2021, how all the news headlines were screaming, framing lumber is too expensive, framing lumber is too expensive. Well, that is because the demand to construct homes became extreme due to the Federal Reserve buying mortgage-backed securities. Why would framing lumber go from $400 up to $1,600 even when during the construction boom of 2004, 5, 6, it was nothing like that. And it was low for another 14 years after that point. It went to these extremes because the Federal Reserve was distorting the market. And now that the Federal Reserve is tightening and selling the same mortgage-backed securities that it used to buy, framing lumber has fallen in price again. It's going to fall much lower. I would not be surprised if it falls all the way to a very low point, the lowest point in this entire series, because of the need to compensate from the shortage that the Federal Reserve created, which caused an overproduction and therefore a predictable glut. This is what happens when the Federal Reserve distorts just one part of the economy and people two or three steps removed, lumber producers, they aren't equipped to front run the Federal Reserve and manage these types of artificial thumbs on the scale. So they have a shorted situation, then an overproduction situation. Now, framing lumber is, of course, only one component of housing construction, but I have often featured housing construction statistics on this channel, and we will now look at that. This is a housing construction chart, also from Calculated Risk blog. And the number of units under construction in 2021 was at a record high. The last time it was at this much of a high was in 1973 when the United States had very different demographics. A number of baby boomers were entering the workforce for the first time and buying houses for the first time. Now we have the same type of distortion of over 1.7 million units being under construction only because the Federal Reserve has distorted the market. As you saw from the quote at the beginning of this video, 
Anything the Federal Reserve does to increase the price of houses necessarily increases the production of new housing, and even more so now that we have a work from home technological capability. People have the freedom to leave an unusually expensive area if they were only living there for commute related reasons. And that is causing a deflation in housing prices, which further dampens the economy because the United States made the mistake of making housing a way for people to make money rather than for for housing to just rise a little bit so that they don't lose money from having a house. It has become a source of making money, which has caused expensive cities to obstruct construction, meaning that lower cost cities can increase construction and attract people over there, which is now much, much, much easier due to the work from home and video conferencing revolution. And this video conferencing revolution is only going to accelerate because it is getting more and more embedded. And as a dematerialized technology under Atom principles, the quality of video conferencing will rise a lot faster than the quality of any other technologies that might get people to come back to the office, such as a dramatic improvement in the quality of the coffee machine or a dramatic improvement in the quality of office chairs. Yeah, I would rather bet on a dramatic improvement in the quality of video conferencing technology and the normalization of work practices that are decentralized and people working with each other successfully from home and thus saving three hours a day in commuting and preparing to go to work. Three hours a day is a lot. So these are a couple of charts that can leave you to think about a number of themes on this channel. One is the work from home revolution. The other is the housing market and how the Federal Reserve creates extreme distortions in booms and busts in the housing market and how quantitative easing in its current form has really reached its end. The Federal Reserve just buys treasuries and mortgage backed securities. They never think about doing more because they keep thinking each wave of quantitative easing is the last one, yet they always have to do more and more as I explain in many videos on this channel. Quantitative easing has to rise exponentially to offset technological deflation. And all market forces, all of them, are going in the direction of cash being sent directly to people as the only solution. The Fed funds rate will be zero again before very long, and quantitative easing will continue. But there could be a breakage in the system because the Federal Reserve and all those PhD economists who are hyper-theoretical, they still assume all QE can be reversed. They even say so openly, just like I described in my previous video, which you can see in this link up here. They're not even considering sending cash directly to people, which would be much fairer. It has to be in an equal amount to all U.S. citizen adults, whether rich or poor or single or married or male or female or young or old. It has to be equal. And that is the way to create the proper rising tide that lifts all boats but lifts the poorer boats more because while rich people also get the same amount of money, it matters to them a lot less. And it will be small, something small like $5,000 a year, but for some people that makes a difference. That is a heck of a lot better than buying treasuries and mortgage-backed securities and destroying decision-making across the entire economy by distorting those two markets. And as we saw, the whiplash effect gets more and more severe once you go downstream in the supply chain. Framing lumber prices quadrupled and then crashed back down to a low price and will probably go to an ultra low price because of a glut and due to a reversal of all this extreme home construction. This is going to be an increasingly extreme problem in the economy because of the theoretical nature of the Federal Reserve economists and the fact that they never face consequences for the problems they create. Their job that the Federal Reserve are recession proof so they are not impacted by the recessions and economic cycle extremes that they themselves create. How is that a fair system? Now, if you like this type of content, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. Thank you very much for watching.